Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of For the Classical Guitarist. My name is John, and in this video we have episode 3 of my series, A Little Bit About, and the piece is Lagrima by Francisco Tarraga. If you're new here, I hope they like what you see, and hopefully you consider sticking around, subscribing, checking out the videos, and all that good stuff. Anyway, let's get started. So if this is your first time watching one of these videos, I want to just go ahead and say right off the bat that in this video I'm not going to talk about how to play the piece, or rather talk about the history of the piece and just some of my thoughts about it. Anyway, let's start off with the history. So when trying to find what I think is the most important part of any back into a piece, which is when it was written, it was a little bit confusing. And the reason why is because there are believed to be two dates of when this was written. It was either written in 1881 or 1891, a whole 10 years apart. But why is that? So I'm sure that many of you guys know this already, but the title of Lagrima translates to either Tear or Teardrop in Spanish. And knowing that will come into play with the stories that I'm about to tell you about why it was written. So story number one takes place in 1881 when Tarragon was in London. And he was there because he was doing concerts and tours and all that stuff all around Europe. But when he was in London, he was there for a little while and he really started to miss his homeland, which is where he was inspired to write this piece that made him sad but also happy. We'll get more into the musical elements of the piece later, but you can definitely see how the sad and happy play into a feeling of missing your homeland but also being happy of where you're at currently. What is the matter, my show? Do you miss home? Your family, perhaps? It was then that they advised him to capture that moment of sadness in his music. Thus, he conceived the theme of one of his most memorable works, Lagrima. So story number two also takes place in London, except this one is a little bit more sad. And it has to do with that he was doing constant tours, like I mentioned before. But this time in this story, he found out that one of his sons passed away while he was there. And because he was so busy concertizing and doing all that stuff, he didn't really have any time to grieve. And it's said that one night he just walked out on stage and just improvised this piece while trying to process all of his feelings of grief. So story number three, I'm not entirely sure of the date. It very well might have been a little bit after the 1881 experience, but it was when he was on tour in Mallorca doing concerts. Maybe it was part of the same tour as the London tour, but again, we don't know. At least I don't know. Anyway, it's said that he heard his daughter pass away while he was doing a concert in Mallorca, and this is what he did to kind of express his grief of feelings of not being able to be there for her. And finally, story number four, which seems to be more or less tied with the first story on what seems to be the most common belief of when this piece and why this piece was written. It's just said that he came home from a concert tour and he found his daughter passed away three days before he got back. And this piece is what he wrote down to show his feelings of grief for losing his child and not being able to say goodbye. So as you can see, there are multiple ideas and stories behind when, how, and where this piece was written. And there's even different ideas on when his daughter died, or if it even was his daughter that died. Let's go on and talk about the piece itself and talk about how some of these stories maybe relate to the composition. Like I said, we start off in the key of E major, which is a very friendly guitar key, and we had this very nice and calming melody that sounds something like this. Even in a major key, it still sounds sad and bittersweet. Take a listen. Once the major section is completed, we move on over to the B section, which like I said, is in the parallel minor. So now we are in E minor and we have a minor melody that sounds something like this. As you can see, it's pretty similar to the major one, but it has some differences. And finally, after we hear that twice, we go back to the A section to close us off. So like I said, the song is just A, B, A with major, minor, major. So let's go ahead and talk about how the stories can relate to all of this. Now I'm going to do my best to try to make a description that applies to all the stories, but if it doesn't, I apologize. So I believe the major section is kind of just showing us the innocence and kind of the naiveness and happiness of the outlook on just the situation he's at. Very happy, but also kind of bittersweet because he doesn't really know how to feel just yet. 
Once we move on over to the minor section, things are starting to get a little bit more dissonant. You have chords that are moving more frequently than they would, and maybe even implying harmonies that aren't even that common of the time. I believe that this shows whatever story you're thinking of, his anger and just kind of his overall real grieving process of what is happening to him, whether he's missing home, whether he's grieving the loss of a child, or a combination of the two. Finally, once the minor section is done, we move back on over to the major section for one more time, which to me just shows his final overall positive outlook on things still, as if there's still an ever so slight glimmer of hope for things to come. So overall, the reason why I think this piece was so successful and so many people like to play it as well as listen to it is just because of how simple it is. There's a lot to say when something is only 16 bars like this song is and so many parts of it stick out. It has an easy to remember melody and to play it's not all that difficult so it's a piece that many beginners can hear and they get inspired to want to play. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you guys are new here and you liked what you saw in this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below. Leave a comment letting me know your favorite part, what story you guys believe or don't believe. And if you want to check out more videos of mine, considering subscribing to the channel, ringing the bell, checking out a few more videos up here, and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.